Welcome to the Harvesting Wisdom Podcast. Together we explore the vast landscapes of life, delving into the rich soil of experiences, sowing the seeds of curiosity, and harvesting the profound wisdom that each episode unfolds. everybody. Welcome back to Before the Harvest. My name is Madison Myers, and today I am joined by two amazing guests with us here from ASU. Thank you guys so much for being here today and for doing this interview. Um, will you guys just really quickly um, introduce yourselves and um, what it is that you do at ASU? Yeah, thanks so much <laughs> for the invitation to be here. Um, I'm Ariane Cease. I'm an associate professor in the School of Sustainability and School of Life Sciences. Um, and I also uh, co-direct the Global Locus Initiative. I'm Rick Overson. I'm a research scientist at Arizona State University. And I uh, work with Ariane, and I do two sort of things. One is that I um, facilitate uh, the research of a lot of students who are doing uh, research on locusts mm -hmm. and grasshoppers. And another thing that I do is I work with um, a stakeholder group of individuals across the world um, to help with building information resources and sharing information and communicating science to help with sustainable locust management. Very cool. So will you guys tell me a little bit about the work that you're doing, whether it's your research, um, just kind of elaborate on what you guys have already said. Yeah, so um, at the Global Locust Initiative, uh, our aim is to, to understand um, sort of what makes grasshoppers and locusts uh, tick and um, use that to sustainably manage them. Cool. Yeah, so what made you guys interested in this research to begin with? Like what kind of started that spark and passion for studying locust? Um, I can jump in and then <laughs> let Rick follow up with his... Uh, uh, insect stories. Um, so I, um, I grew up on a ranch and I was exposed to, um, grasshopper outbreaks early on. <laughs> um, I, um, used to collect them and, uh, feed them to my, um, uh, pet praying mantises. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then I left the ranch and I was off to college and I thought, you know, I'm never gonna, you know, live and work on a ranch again. Um, but then I had the opportunity to join the Peace Corps, um, uh, Senegal, West Africa, mm -hmm. and I arrived at the tail end of the um, last major upsurge. Oh. And so seeing uh, the devastation that it had on the, the communities and the lack of sustainable management options um, led me to dedicate my career to studying um, locusts. Wow, that's very cool. And you? I was um, <laughs> obsessed with insects. From as long as I can remember, I have like three-year-old memories of fistfuls of worms and mayonnaise jars <laughs> with like escaping ants in the house. And I, for some reason, as I got to college, I didn't really, there was some kind of disconnect where I didn't really like realize or wrap my brain around the fact that I could like study bugs in college. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'll do pre-med because I like biology. And I think about, luckily, my late in my junior year, I, through coincidence, like met a mentor who mm -hmm. made me realize like, oh, you could study insects. And then I just did a left hand turn and I went to graduate school studying insect behavioral ecology and had kind of a 10 year obsession with understanding insect behavior mm -hmm. and all of its fascinating forms. And then it was about eight years ago that uh, Ariane hired me back to work at ASU on the Locust Challenge, and that was kind of my, my very first time seeing locusts mm -hmm. and experiencing them. So, Very cool. So the research that you guys are doing on locusts, what, are the, what is the potential impact of learning more about it? And what do you see, how do you see this research like going in the future? Like what more do you want to explore and learn? Yeah, so locusts um, are surprisingly challenged, challenging <laughs> to manage. I can imagine, um, yeah. <laughs> when you have a, a locust outbreak or upsurge or plague, um, you're talking about something the size of Manhattan or larger. Um, oh. It's highly migratory. 
Um, they can migrate hundreds of miles. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have to, to manage this on a continental scale. Okay. And you have to work together um, with different organizations and people, you know, across disciplines and, and boundaries. Um, and, and currently, um, the most common um, management technique is um, chemical pesticides. Um, and during an upsurge, those can be sprayed on millions of hectares. Yeah. Um, and even in the U.S., um, to manage grasshoppers, um, we also use chemical pesticides that can be sprayed on up to like 300,000 wow. um, yeah. acres uh, during an outbreak year. Um, and so we're really trying to understand um, the locust biology to figure out um, ways to, to more sustainably manage, the, manage them. Okay. Um, and... There's a, a couple of factors that we're working on. Uh, one is through um, understanding their nutrition, um, and another is through um, uh, a pesticides, a fungus that just infects uh, grasshoppers and locusts. Wow, very interesting. The way that you explained that was so perfect. It just clicked <laughs> for me. That made so much sense. So how how is your research going to benefit like our food systems and sustainability in the environment? Like why... Why is it important to be learning about locusts, something that people might not necessarily think does have, like the average person might not think about a locust or a grasshopper when they see it on their sidewalk, but why is it important to do this research? How is it going to help us? Yeah, it's Yeah, we have, as Ari was saying, grasshoppers here in the United States that um, largely are a threat to rangeland, so they compete with cattle. Mm-hmm. Um, in grasslands, and so that's a management challenge. But we don't think a lot about the locust challenge often here in the United States because we don't have a true locust species here in the U.S. But as um, Ari was saying, um, one of the things that makes locusts so dangerous, they don't really harm people directly. They don't carry diseases like some insects do. But what they do um, is they're just voracious eaters. And so those swarms that I already mentioned, like something that is, you know, a swarm that has, you know, maybe 40 million individuals in a square kilometer can eat the equivalent food of 35,000 people a day. And wow. so this is a natural phenomenon, but um, that becomes very dangerous, especially in areas where there's subsistence farming, where people depend on those things that they're growing for their livelihoods. Yeah. Wow. That's like, that's crazy. I had no idea. Um, that's so fascinating. And I kind of want to go back to you and talk a little bit. Um, can you talk a little bit about like your Peace Corps experience? You talked about how you ended up in Senegal and, um, will you just explain that experience of like seeing what came out of the locust in that community? Yeah. So, um, I was, uh, an agroforestry, a sustainable agroforestry yeah. um, extension agent um, for um, for Peace Corps Senegal. Um, I arrived in two thousand five, um, tail end of the major desert locust upsurge, um, and um, seeing you know locusts and grasshoppers um, descend on the on the village was um, was pretty eye opening. Um, you know, we would run around, um, you know, trying to like scare them. Uh, we would take onion sacks and try and cover, you know, small gardens that we had, um, you know, care- carefully watered. Um, a lot of times you're, you're pulling water from a, a you know, hundred foot yeah. well or so. Um, and you're taking real care of those, um, during kind of like the dry season. Um, and then, you know, these insects arrive and yeah. they just like eat, everything Every, yeah <laughs> like I remember them just like eating the bark off the trees and then I would um I lived in uh, one community with the Ningui but I worked with several surrounding mm-hmm. communities um and so I would go talk to the farmers I was um normally talking with about mm-hmm. like implementing tree technology um into their compounds and agriculture um and you know it went from like you know how you know how, how are you how's your family how's how's your work <laughs> yeah. going all that and you know the answer was uh, always like I like I switch and look oh yeah it's like the you know that they're the insects are eating everything yeah wow. and it was like um it was uh yeah really profound experience to see that and to see that that there there weren't a lot of sustainable you know, approaches that we could use, especially like once the outbreak was already there. Yeah. Um, and so then that led me to go back to grad school where I said, okay, well, I, I feel like I'm, 
not super awesome at the the um, the international development thing on the ground. Yeah. I want to kind of take a, a longer view and understand the system. Yeah. Um, and so then I um, came back to the U.S. Um, and I had been applying to grad <laughs> schools, um, and so I started working on my PhD, trying to understand locus biology. Mm -hmm. And I thought if we can understand locus biology and what causes these outbreaks, you know, maybe we can um, do something to help prevent prevent outbreaks. Um, or at least have a better, um, you know, predictive capacity of when they're going to arrive. Wow. So then, you know, farmers can do things like maybe, you know, wait to plant crops or something like that. So they don't lose all the, the investment seed in that first round. Wow, very interesting. Um, um, and then I just kind of want to talk about you both work at ASU and you talked a little bit about how you guys work with students. So what is it about working with students and helping them with their research that you guys are really um, excited and passionate about? Yeah, um, for me, it's fantastic. So I, I think I sort of decided at the midpoint of my career or wherever I'm at in my career, I don't know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that some, you know, my um, my sort of pa passion was in like being more, having more of a collaborative or support role in science. And so um, I'm in a great position for me because um, we have a lot of uh, graduate students and undergraduates who are doing research projects in the lab, and I'm able to work with them and collaborate and help them to frame experiments. Um, and that's like very rewarding uh, for me. And so um, for me, it's fantastic. And I think the, you know, to um, brag shamelessly about <laughs> our lab at ASU <laughs> Um, we really are um, doing something really that's quite cool, which is that we're doing a lot of nerdy biology, but we are in real time thinking about and communicating with people on the front lines as we're doing that research. And so I think that's a really rich environment for students to um, sort of sharpen their scientific skills in. Wow. Very cool. Thank you guys so much for coming on my little podcast segment and um, thank all of you. So I would like to thank all of our audience members for watching and sticking around to learn with us today. Um, be sure to check out the full podcast recording with these two with Mr. Mike McMahon, which will also be up on our YouTube channel and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you for joining the Harvesting Wisdom Podcast. Click subscribe and like for ongoing insightful conversations. Explore our webpage for show notes and additional resources. Visit our guest webpage for deeper insights. Your engagement is the foundation of our journey. And until next time, keep pursuing wisdom.